This video is about Pam Malaki. What I'm about to do is in very, very bad taste, but I'm gonna do it anyway. He is the guy who founded Oculus VR, so the headset VR goggles. He was the one who was 19, he created the company. Then he sold that company to Facebook and he was kicked out of Facebook. Why was Palmer Lucky fired? That is a specific personnel matter that seems like it would be inappropriate to just me. Then he created a new company, which is in the defense space called Enderil Industries, and they're doing military applications. A lot of times, rule of the mob can be a lot worse than rule but of is, one person. But is he I left because I got fired. I wouldn't have left otherwise. The last year has been the two part Palmer Lucky I Told You So tour. I started an AI company six plus years ago when it wasn't hot to start an AI company. You guys are building the digital wall for Trump. I gave $10,000 to a pro-Trump group and I think that it's something to do with it. Replacing one person isn't going to change the way that things work. Are sure. we building weapons of war? We've been around for six years. We're well funded. We have a lot of programs. We have a lot of revenue. We're doing very well. Everyone's recognizing that autonomy can be applied to real problems, defense problems, education problems. So he's a very interesting character. I've actually been following him for a while because I found his interviews very insightful already for a few years. Recently, he has become more and more famous because he has been a billionaire for a while now, but he never really fit the look of what the public and news companies expected a good CEO to be. He's very likable, but he looks like a villain. The way he dresses, the way he looks, I think he's awesome. So my name is Palmer Lucky. I founded two companies. My first was a company called Oculus VR that I founded when I was 19 years old and living in a camper trailer. Sold that to for a few billion dollars to Facebook and then got fired a few years later and then started Android because I wanted to work in the national security space. So this video is going to be about him being on a revenge tour of all the people who talk shit about him. That woman deserves her revenge because he had certain political opinions that people didn't like or political party affiliations that people didn't like. So people started making stuff up. But then he started to be invited to big conferences or interviews and he used that opportunity to get his revenge and to actually point out who lied about him, which is a very rare thing because most people, they would just let it go. Let's say the New York Times writes a piece about you and you didn't like it. And then years later, you have an opportunity to be at some event or whatever. You would usually just not point it out. You would not talk about it, but he didn't. I find it hilarious. So let's go through the clips of him telling a story. I talked earlier about NPC thinking that prioritizes popularity over principles. What I'm about to do is in very, very bad taste, but I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> One of the people who I think embodies this type of NPC thinking, of going with what's popular and not being willing to, to, to ever reverse their position even when they're proven wrong, is Jason Calacanis. Let me read about some of the things he said about me over the years. Just a, just a small sampling. Palmer Lucky. Hideous. What an idiot. A moron. This guy Parker Lucky, Parker Lucky, a complete and utter moron. Jesus, this kid is an idiot. Palmer Lucky is just an idiot and a troll. He is dumb. So, so. So dumb. So this is at the All In Summit. All In is this podcast. Jason Calacanis, Chamath, Palahapatia, David Friedberg, and David Sachs. So four people, four investors, quite well known at this point. Some of them have been well known for a while, especially Jason Calacanis, because he has his own podcast, he has his own show, he does a lot of media stuff, he likes the whole journalism angle. So the podcast is actually really good. No, it isn't, it's just contradiction. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. It is not. It is. <laughs> you just contradicted me. No, I didn't. And they also do this event. I think they did another one recently so the podcast highly recommend but it's really funny because i already knew about him i've already watched quite a few interviews with him when this came out so i was excited oh awesome i like the podcast i like him and then this happened it's so funny because he is going off on jason calacanis and if you know his own show of jason calacanis i think it's this week in startups his podcast on youtube but he clearly made some personal attacks on the sky and now he invited jason calacanis himself invited him to his event so it's not a coincidence. It's not like Jason Calacanis and Palmer Lucky meet up by sheer coincidence and now he gives him his feedback. He says, hey, you said something about me. Now I want to set the record straight. Hey, it's you, isn't it? Excuse me. Remember me? Two days ago, I gave you my meatball sandwich in the park. No, he invited him. He said something mean about him. Then he invited him to his event. <laughs> oh no, we got to keep going. For him to pull the plug on the Palmer Lucky experience was brilliant. 
kudos, Zuckerberg. A complete lack of moral character and leadership. Palmer Lucky, a complete moron. Palmer doesn't care about any of his employees, family members, or team members. Now, this doesn't include any of the lies that he's told about me. This doesn't include any of the lies he's told about my businesses. This doesn't include any of the terrible things that his co-hosts and guests have said about me over the years that went unchallenged and egged on. If I'm a hideous, stupid person with no morals who doesn't care about my family or my employees, I shouldn't be invited here no matter how relevant Ukraine is. Yeah, this is the funny thing about his story. Because he started a defense company and the Ukraine thing, this was propelled him. But you see, he kind of has the villain look. He has this weird beard. He always wears Hawaiian shirts. One delivery, 50,000 more for each viable embryo. That's 1.5 million if you get all 15 species off the island. Oh, I'll get them all. He kind of looks a little more on the villain side. But here's the story. He's 19. He founds Oculus. Goes very well. Facebook wants to buy him. I believe the first time he says, no then they keep building the company then facebook comes back with billions of dollars on the table and then he sells his company but he keeps working at the company so he founds the company is bought out by facebook but then he keeps working at the company problem is he isn't one to comply obviously if you become a billionaire so young you're probably not like most people so he is not one to comply how about i give you the finger and you give me my phone call. He has certain political views, I believe in 2016. He donated to some campaign related to Donald Trump or it was something against Hillary Clinton. One of those things, I think it was a small sum. He's a billionaire, he donated a few thousand. It was like a small thing. But this created a whole ecosystem of lies around it where they said, hey, he donated this, he donated that, stuff he never did. So in the news media, this whole thing became bigger and bigger and bigger. And it went so far that he was kicked out of the company because of the political appearance. <laughs> Oh my God. And that's when Jason Calacanis picked that up and said a lot of stuff about him. And then he said, oh, Zuckerberg, you fired him. Good on you, because obviously Facebook bought the company. So if you really want to simplify it, Palmer Lucky, he became the victim of cancer culture in the dumbest way possible. He literally just made a donation. But now he's becoming the darling of the industry because Ukraine and Taiwan have made a lot of people who would usually scream to cancel others realize how important defense is. So now he comes through the back door which is hilarious which obviously he never planned and now he's in a position to fire back at the people who talk shit about him he's had many chances to retract or apologize these statements and rather than taking any of them he keeps telling people that the reason i won't be on his show is because i'm too thin-skinned because i disagree with him on some of the things he said about oculus this is not the case i've explicitly told him why i've refused to be on his show it's because he and his crew of bullies have been vicious liars who have attacked me for years and berated me for years and spread lies about me for rear years in a way that I've been able to overcome that very few entrepreneurs would have the money or the resources or the credibility to do. And being nice to a few people, like I'm sure he's being nice to you, does not excuse this. This isn't debatable whether it happened or not. It clearly happened. It's the, the, these are all direct quotes from things that he said over the years, both while I was at Oculus and during my time after Oculus. I actually like that he's doing that because as I said, most people, especially billionaires, people who are on a very, very high level and they're busy. They're really, really busy. They don't have time for that. But I actually like that he's doing that. It shows that he has a very sensitive side. And even now he's sometimes stumbling over his words. It shows a very sensitive side. And I think that's actually really cool that he does that because it's very untypical behavior. And it makes him also very accessible because he has his heart on his sleeve, which is kind of cool. But it also made me think, who have I? I talked about because I make videos for a few years now. Luckily, I have a tiny, tiny channel, so very few people watch me at all. And a lot of videos were about Elizabeth Holmes. I was saying, okay, who did I make? Elizabeth Holmes, she's in prison. Hey, Roshak. Hey, you're pretty famous, right? I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me. And the guy who was like Elizabeth Holmes with a turtleneck, also in prison. Marcus Braun, luckily in prison. Most people I talked about, they're kind of in prison. Few are not. Adam Newman, I made a few videos about, he's not in prison. But I was kind of thinking, okay, who have I talked really badly about? I hope I didn't. I hope I didn't do any personal attacks. Obviously, I make jokes. But yeah, makes you think. Because everybody you talk about, they're human beings too. But even if they never fire back at you, it's a pretty poor way to go through life just insulting people or just 
making stuff up about people that is just not true. Or even not doing your research and saying something that is not true, even though you think it's the truth. You're just propagating the lies. It's also bad. And Jason, like many influential people, some of them even in this room, who have treated me like shit for years, suddenly changed their tune as soon as Andrew was on the upswing, as soon as we were doing good things. They started inviting me on their podcasts, liking all my social media posts, putting me on their innovator lists, all without any acknowledgement whatsoever that they were the ones that were attacking me when it was popular, kicking me while I was on the ground, and treating me like garbage. And it's really pathetic because a lot of my remaining critics at least are basing their opinions on some kind of consistent worldview. A lot of other people are attacking me and the work that I do because it's popular. When it's popular to attack me, they attack me. When it's unpopular to attack me, when Ukraine is being attacked, they are suddenly friends. I think there's very few people who are ever in that position where you're either you have a lot of attention, a lot of people know about you, whatever it is, or you're on a very high level. And even if it's a small number of people who know about you, they realize that you're whatever and the top authority. I think there's very few people who ever realize who their real friends are or who the people are who really think for themselves. Who the fuck wants to know who their real friends are? <laughs> You don't want to know that, believe me. You don't want to know. But I'm sure we're going to hear more about him because his story is so fascinating. After he was kicked out at Oculus VR, and he is a technologist, he loves the technology. And when he realized that he wanted to start a defense company, he first thought about, okay, what type of defense company do I want to create? And then he thought about, okay, if there's the biggest defense company in like 50 years or 100 years, what is their core technology? What is it that they're building that makes them the center of defense? defense technology, the most important thing. And then he thought, okay, AI, let's create some type of AI technology, infrastructure, operating system, something core to what defense is going to look like in the future. Skynet defense system We're in. now activated. Past the firewalls, local defense nets, Minutemen and subs. And as he himself says, and I'm just obviously paraphrasing what he said himself, he started all of these things when they were not sexy at all. Nobody wanted to do any defense work. Google pulled out because all of the employees were furious that they would work with the Department of Defense and saying Google said, okay, we can't work with the Department of Defense. And he did AI when it wasn't a buzzword, when nobody cared about AI. So that's a very interesting mind, someone who tries to solve a very important problem and thinks about what is going to happen at the end. What is the outcome? I want to have. So for sure, we're going to hear about him in the future. And he already said that 2024, something for sure is going to happen with Taiwan. What if they start a war? Relax, I built a bomb shelter. But we might enter a new era. I saw that, for example, in the EU and elsewhere, NATO is going to create their own innovation funding, their own, let's say, funding program where they fund specifically defense tech. Because all of the EU funding programs, they stay away from anything related to defense because they have their own regulations and criteria they have to adhere to. So the EU is kind of dumb if you think about it. Now they have a war right next to them, and they even try to get the country into the EU that is currently at war. But at the same time, they've been so arrogant to say no to any defense tech. And now NATO comes in as the fund companies in that space, which obviously is going to make no difference at all. Not enough money, way too late. But yeah, for sure, we're going to hear more of Palmer Lucky in 2024. And those are the same people that I know are going to go back to shitting on me the second that it becomes popular again. Um, I'm coming to the end of this. And I know that you guys are probably thinking, wow, this guy's pretty thin skinned for a billionaire. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. But I want to remind you of something. Jason and the people like him are the reason I was fired from, my, from Oculus, my own company. The company that was my heart and my soul for my entire teenage and adult life. For him, it was a game, it was his show. And for me, it was everything and I lost everything. Yeah, you can imagine. You can say, okay, he made a lot of money. He's out of the company, but he is someone who is embedded in an ecosystem. He's a technologist. He likes to build companies. He needs connections. He needs to hire people. He needs to raise money. There's a lot of things he still needs to do. So his reputation is still important. So when he was kicked out of the company, everybody knew he was fired. Everybody knew he didn't want to do this. Everybody knew that he loved this company. He was kicked out. And then people said lies about him. Like he wasn't even involved in the day-to-day -day operation. He didn't even care about the company. He made dumb mistakes or whatever, which obviously, according to him, wasn't true at all. He built this company. He said no to Mark Zuckerberg once, and then he came back with billions, and then he sold the company.
So this is not an incompetent guy. So he was doing his stuff. So when someone who was very influential, let's say Jason Calaganis or other people, they make up lies about him, this is going to impact all the investors around him, all the people who don't want to work with him. So he probably really felt the pain. Sounds ridiculous because he's a billionaire, but you can see that he really suffered under this. It almost destroyed me. I'm still filled with rage about it. I always will be. I'll end with this. I was able to create Anderl because a small group of people were willing to give me a second chance to let me build something great in an important but controversial industry that was being constantly berated by people who thought we lived at the end of history. They invested in me while Jason was trying to poison my career and keep me on the ground. Thank God he failed. Thank God for investors who ignore him and people like him. The market conditions suggest there are going to be a lot of founders, hopefully none of the people in this room, losing their startups over the next year or so. And I pray that they get a second chance like I did. I pray they aren't deterred from working on important but unpopular problems. I pray that they will successfully claw their way back to success, that they aren't deterred from working on things that really matter. I pray that they manage to do this despite the inevitably stupid and hot takes it's, sorry, inevitably stupid and spiteful hot takes. That Jason, his associates, and the many people like him who make money spewing bullshit are certainly going to be putting out there. Amen. Thank you. That's a good one. And watch the whole thing. If you just put in Parmalucky and All In Podcasts or All In, you're going to find it. Even if you just put in Parmalucky into YouTube. Because after that, they have a panel. So it's him and then the four co-hosts, including Jason Calacanis. Jason Calacanis, he just shakes his hand in the beginning and then he is trying to save it. Because this is the next thing. If you talk shit about people, but you don't realize that's what you're doing and you think everything is fun and games, you know, like, oh, I think he hates me. And then he comes and then he says it. And even then you don't realize that, oh damn, I really messed up. You still think that you said something that was perfectly fine or everything you said is fine. I think it takes a very special person to not acknowledge your own mistake to such a degree. When someone says, you have really hurt me, these are the things you have done. This is why the things you have said were wrong. This is factually incorrect, factually incorrect, factually incorrect. You had a big impact on the entire ecosystem a lot of the people around me they listen to you you told them lies this is what hurt me and then you don't even acknowledge that it's kind of ridiculous so then jason calacanis just shuts up and he's just playing on his phone literally on stage kind of playing on his phone or whatever he has and then the other three co-hosts they're interviewing him and they obviously they have no beef with him so it's a really cool interview so Pamalaki, really cool guy second interview now the same thing with bloomberg because of course it is a very politically charged thing and i think in the u.s it's probably not controversial to say that a lot of the tech media or let's say the tech industry it's very left focused or very democratic or whatever it is in the US so of course him being on the right side being on the Republican donor side especially someone like Donald Trump who was so extremely polarizing to a ridiculous degree that of course Bloomberg was one of them who talked shit about him and then they invited him which is the most ridiculous thing and I will note you know I don't want to don't, don't want to be, be, be too mean but one of the reasons that people have try to turn me into a partisan figure is because it's really good for clicks. The reality is I spend maybe, well, I don't know, 1% of my time on politics. I spend 99% on tech, but that is not what people wanted to focus on. And a lot of it's also not true. I mean, heck, one of the moderators on your previous panels was on TV spreading all kinds of lies about me during the election year. She was saying that I was funding uh, fake news and paying people to spread it. She was on TV saying that I was funding alt-right memes and teams of people to spread on the internet and said the real reason I was fired from Oculus is because I wasn't even involved in the day-to-day -day of my business anymore. I mean, just just like an ideological okay. hit squad on oh, me let's... spreading. Hang on, let me finish. <laughs> uh, I think here's the thing, and this is my taste. I find him super likable, but I think he actually is likable. Tell me if you think he's likable because sometimes I just, or very often I root for the underdog. Even Mark Zuckerberg Zuckerberg, when I watched Mark Zuckerberg and I did a video that he always appears so weird, where I just wanted to analyze why that is the case, because I still think he's super impressive and I still think he's doing a very impressive job because it's very rare that you have someone who founds a company who can actually lead the company when it's big and then innovate that company further when it's already big. This is a very rare person, so impressive. But it is going to bother you because you're human and, and I was human. I am human still. Um, <laughs> but... Um, but it, but I was just referring to myself in the past. Um. 
Rocky was not here. Even Adam Newman, when I hear Adam Newman speak, I always think like, oh, this is Adam Newman, he's kind of likable. But this is my taste, so tell me what you think. But you hear the interviewer trying to butt in because if you're an interviewer, you have to be very careful that someone doesn't go completely off the rails. Sometimes you have to worry, oh, okay, I have to make sure that this person doesn't go crazy or does something completely ridiculous. And he does that, and it's so refreshing. I think a lot of people hate on Elon Musk or like Elon Musk because he is so, I don't want to say eccentric, because what does that even mean? Like out of the ordinary? But because he seems to just be his own person, to always speak from the top of his mind, to never really care what other people think. Fuck that, we're going to get it done. So he has this appearance of someone who speaks his mind. I think people really like that about him. But of course, people also really hate that about him when people say, oh, he's a fraud and whatever. But I think Palmer Lucky, he has the same potential because his track record is pretty impressive. Plus, he always seems to speak his mind. And I think this is one of the things you get very rarely. You don't get that from the CEO of Microsoft, Google, Apple. They don't seem like they're speaking their mind. They honestly, they seem more like a marketing person when they talk. He speaks his mind. I think it's really fascinating to observe how he is going to evolve over the next few years because he has already done impressive things and he's only 30 years old. <laughs> well, you, we'll have to let her check the, that, but I will let you finish. Uh, th th nobody disagrees on these things. It's not a matter of opinion. It was just a fabricated story that outlets, including Bloomberg, picked up, ran with, and performed a character assassination on me and have tried to turn me into a political figure because that's what they want to do to me. People do f who spend far more on politics on the other side of the aisle would never even be asked the question you're asking me. Would you ever have Zuckerberg up here and say, hey, you, you donated a lot of money to politics. I mean, you're a pretty political figure. I mean, is, isn't your company actually really partisan? Yeah. You wouldn't even dream of doing it. The reality is it's because it's okay to attack one side for being political mm -hmm. and not the other that the question is even being asked. And, uh, you know, I understand that you have to bring it up because that's unfortunately the hell I live in. But it's something that I'm still going to get frustrated with. I might ask Zuckerberg that question. I might. She's, by the way, really cool in the interviews. So she handled that really, really well. But she was trying to get out. She said, oh, we have to let her check that. So some journalists, she talked obviously shit about him. She said things that weren't true. And she was like, oh yeah, we have to let her check that. And he's like, no, no, these are not debatable. She said things that were incorrect. So there's nothing to check. She said wrong things. And this is the organization you're leading. And then in the middle, she gives like a nod where it's like, yeah, you're right. I would never ask that when it comes to the other political side. It's always is just this side. And then the, I might ask Zuckerberg that question. What does that even mean? What's the point of acknowledging that she maybe is going to ask that question? If she wanted to say something, she could have said, I'm definitely going to ask Mark Zuckerberg that question or whatever. But that's how it is if you're in a big organization. She's a puppet, so she can't even say whatever she wants to say because she has the same constraints. All right, that was Palmer Lucky. Thanks for watching.